She's like, come on, bring on the blood too? <laughs> Well, I read the book. It did sound like there was a little bit of a bloodbath. <laughs> the, book, the book is, uh, the book and the TV show diverge, and the book, if you read it, you know there's like a massive time jump from like emergent situation to almost post-apocalyptic. Our first season is all pre-apocalypse, but it gets pretty hairy there at the end. <laughs> There's there's more blood coming. There's more drama coming. Yeah, by the it, it was you know, CBS. I keep saying this. They were super supportive of the idea of just let's go for it. You know, forget slow burn. Let's just burn burn. And so there's you know again the character stuff I think grows in a natural way, but the stuff with the animals it, it's a wild ride. Yeah. Can you talk about because it just piqued my interest the final scene of the first episode with the cats in the tree. Where did you come up with that? That was creepy as hell. with it in your kitchen. I won't take credit for it, but it was a collective idea, but my dog, kitchen. in his kitchen. And uh, now, now you have, like, behind the scenes. But we were all fans of the birds. You know, the, the Hitchcock movie, the birds. And it was sort of like, again, we didn't, we knew that this show wouldn't succeed if it was just about animals tearing out people's throats constantly. We needed to find compelling, creepy images that, you know, can kind of get into your skin. So, what that was in the spirit of I think we have uh, and the cats in the tree the image it's funny because we felt it was really creepy and and it played on the air and there was a lot of feedback that it was like laughably silly and now it might you keep saying that nobody nobody I read it um, don't look at comment boards but, but what that <laughs> what it really was was a setup for the next beat when the cats all come down and then go back home and it was the idea that there are these soldiers living among us that was that for us was because we're animal lovers. He's a cat lover, I'm a dog lover, and our partners are equally cat and dog lover. And the idea that they're living among us, but we don't know what they're thinking. That's what's scary about animals. It's like as much as you know they rely on us and we have this symbiotic relationship, you can't really communicate with them. My son laughs at me because we have a, a dog that's a year and a half, and I'll be like, go upstairs, Charlie, and he's like, the dog doesn't understand you, and I, and, but you're, they do. You're suspicious that they do. <laughs> I, I know that they do. Saying how do we find that tug and pull of keep 
interesting and exciting, but also not where it's moving so fast that you're not getting to really sort of live in the excitement and the mystery of this problem that's building around the world. I think it's been finding that balance primarily. And, and the, the, uh, you know, the book was very international, you know, hopping from country to country, which we decided we wanted to kind of honor the spirit of that. So really, not just hearing about things happening all around the world, but seeing them happen all around the world. So that meant, you know, in Louisiana, having to double it as Africa and Paris, and, you know, we go to, to Brazil, we go, we go all around the world. So it's like, that was challenging. Yeah. Aren't you hesitant at all when you take on this project? Because everybody knows that it's so hard to work with Alima. What's wrong with you? Yes. <laughs> there was a healthy fear and excitement. It's a challenge. Challenges are fun. And we've been fortunate, very incredibly lucky, to, to have made TV shows. And the, and this was like a, a challenge that we looked forward to. And it's been exactly as hard as we imagined. Um, but it's been really fun, too. Well, could you talk about maybe some of the animals you were hoping to be able to use that you may not be able to use on the show? Interestingly enough, so when we first started and when we knew we were going to be in New Orleans, the New Orleans Film Commission or the Wildlife Commissioning, they have a list of animals that you can use and that you can't. And over the course of our very small four-month season, they found that we were so respectful that they actually allowed us to bring in animals that they otherwise wouldn't. So they've actually changed their laws for us. So... Um, Thus far, there hasn't been any animals that we wanted to work with that we haven't been able to. Um, next season might be different. Cause, uh, and in the couple of instances that we couldn't, it's been less about, it's more about we need permits and there's time and whether or not the animal is available um, or born yet in the case of the biggest challenge was getting a leopard cub because the, the ones that were available to work with were too old, frankly. And it's that it's like you you don't imagine that being a problem, 